All right, we're out here today in the middle of the woods. Uh, my friend Nate Moore, who is in Europe and backpacking, has come home, as you saw in the summer video, how he was gone. And we are going to give him a little interview on his trip. All right, you ready? Yep. How does it feel to be home? Well, try like just look at you or look at the camera. Me. You. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you look at the camera. Honestly, it feels pretty good to be home. Obviously, I was away for about 90 days, and when you're gone that long, you definitely start to miss friends and family, and you start to regret things that you didn't do or did do. Before you left, you know, the time that you could have spent, you know, skateboarding or just hanging out, listening to music. And um, when you're away and you're surrounded by people who don't speak the language and, you know, it just gets stressful. And so it feels good to be home where people all speak English. <laughs> <laughs> what inspired you to leave in the first place? Probably the fact that. I was working and I was going to school. I'd always wanted to see other things and I think I was surrounded by the right group of people at the right time. I definitely was inspired by the people around me. I was watching vlogs of people like Ben Brown, uh, Fun for Louie, and they just totally changed the way I was looking at my life and what I wanted to do. You know, Louie Cole, his motto is to go out and find adventure, find your own magic, and that really like struck home with me. Just not sitting at home, going to work, coming home, going to work, going to bed, you know, the same routine over and over again. But to get out, like get out of your comfort zone and just explore different cultures and meet new people. So I think my environment was perfectly set so that I would go off and do my own thing like that. What did you get out of the experience? Definitely confidence in myself that I would be able to handle um, handle myself in certain high stress situations where there's you know like thousands of people all yelling at you in different languages, things you don't understand. You know, I'm confident now that I can find my way around like a busy train station, airport. You know all these different things that are, you know, totally different. I can make my way around marketplaces, you know, and I feel definitely socially, um, when you travel abroad like that, you have to be social and you have to be able to talk and try to make conversation, even if it's, you know, broken French and hand signals. You have to try to talk to people and get out of your comfort zone. Like, that's the biggest thing, to just get out of your comfort zone. Now that you're home, what's your plan? Well, definitely reconnect with friends and family that I haven't seen in a long time. Skateboard as much as possible because I was gone. Second day into our trip, I left my penny board in a hostel and I haven't been able to skate or ride since then. So definitely get as much as that in as possible. Go camping, you can never get, you know, never get enough camping. Just being in the woods, you know, with close friends, fire. In Maine. And being in Maine, <laughs> the things that I missed the most was the foliage. I couldn't have picked a better time to come back. I mean, look at all this. <laughs> it's awesome. 
How did you manage your money? Well, um, at first, we first started off in London. There were so many new things around that I might have spent a little more than I should have. You know, taxis and public transportation was just crazy. Like, I paid $60 or 60 euros for a taxi ride, and I'm pretty sure he just went in circles a couple times and then took me to my hostel. The um, conversion rate is about the same. So 60 euros is probably like $60, give or take. Did you have to like bring American money there and get it like? Yeah, we um, took American money out in Maine <clears throat> and we transferred it at the airport. And if you take money out in these other countries, it's going to charge you a fee, so it's good to use a card. But as we, as we kept going on, uh, I would get cheaper and cheaper, I think. Like there was days, like, I'm saying like, there was days where I wouldn't eat so I could save money and I would go to the grocery store and get noodles and pasta sauce and just make noodles and pasta sauce and that would last me like three or four days. Um, so it wasn't glamorous. Traveling around on a budget isn't glamorous, but it's definitely worth it. And you backpacked, right? Yeah, I backpacked. My pack weighed about 23 kilograms, which is around 30 or 40 pounds. The farthest distance I walked was between Sheffield, Doncaster. We were supposed to be staying with a friend, but she uh, fell through and we walked to the next town, which was about 16 miles, give or take. Um, it was a long day. We hitchhiked a couple times. Hitchhiking's not that bad. People get all up in arms, you know, but I think you'll be okay if you hitchhike. How often did you use public transportation? Uh, pretty often, you know, if I'm not walking. Uh, it was buses for medium distances, trains, got us across countries. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did you like that? <laughs> Taxis were for inner city. How was the view? I saw it in pictures, but how was the view on top of the Eiffel Tower? After seeing it in movies and um, pictures. I feel as though movies upscale the normal thing. They make it grander than it already is. They try to outdo what man has already done. Mind, mind blowing really, like how much architecture like went into that. I just want my experiences and my story to be an inspiration to you. So you know, just step outside your comfort zone and experience things that you wouldn't be able to experience, you know, in the United States. I just want you guys to take it easy and enjoy life, you know, find your own magic, be your own person, and just get out there. See the world, see its wonders, and its mysteries. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>